this teacher is stealing bus passes to get to work. And these teachers with doll babies in hand are trying to access social services, even if it means missing work or leaving their young child at home to watch even younger ones. And when they do, this is a poverty simulation, a role-playing exercise so colonial teachers will know what many colonial students and families go through every day, like home eviction because at least 60% of the district's population live at or below the poverty line. I'm nine years old and I'm watching my brother while my parents go out to work. As a teacher, you say what about that? This does happen. I've had students stay home from school so that they can watch their siblings because their parents have things that they have to take care of. This is unbelievable that people have to go through this. And I just think that this sheds a whole different light onto what our kids are feeling when they come into school. These kids know that the mortgage isn't being paid and they know that the utilities aren't being paid and they know they have no food, obviously, and they know they can't get medical help and that's all sitting on them. And as an adult, it's weighing on me and I just want to throw up and crawl in a hole. I can't imagine what the children are thinking and how they're dealing. We've been living on the other side for so long, we really haven't really experienced what our kids go through. And this is an eye opener. It lets us know like we definitely have to try to have structures in place to handle a lot of these issues. That's the revelation counselors like Shahida Pine hope teachers and administrators come to after going through this exercise. People don't wake up and say I'm going to be a criminal. Um, Times are hard, and so there were people that were stealing. They were finding Social Security cards on the ground, and they went to that family and said, you want your Social Security card back? You're going to have to pay me to get it back. I am very sensitive to the needs of the underprivileged. Very sensitive. This poverty simulation is something every teacher will go through because counselors know being sensitive to the challenges students and their families face outside of the classroom will help students succeed inside the classroom. They got to work doing what they do best. But this job was done with all volunteers, members of the Keystone Mountain Lakes Regional Council of Carpenters. After driving his bus up to this Newcastle home every day, Tim Kelleher got the wheels turning on this project. Kelleher picks up Roger Yeager III, a wheelchair-bound student who attends Leech and is cared for by his grandparents. We would see uh, Mr. Yeager basically put Roger over his shoulder and we said to ourselves that uh, we thought, geez, wouldn't it be nice if we could get a nice handicap ramp in front of the house for the Yeagers? How did Kelleher find these hardworking carpenters? He Googled them. And then he went store to store looking for $2,000 worth of donated materials. 84 Lumber sent the lion's share of the supplies with Lowe's pitching in and Ace Interiors supplying nails. When Sam Noel heard about the need for the wheelchair ramp, he says his 32 fellow carpenters just dug in and got the job done over a weekend. It, it makes you feel good, and that, that's why the guys come out. Um, it makes them feel good to come out and, uh, you know, help somebody that needed the help. And we uh, sometimes don't realize that our skills can be very helpful. We just take it for granted. I guess it really demonstrates the power of we that we have here in the Colonial School District where, you know, we go out and if we see a need in the community or one of, one of our students or whatever, we just reach out to people in the local area. And it's pretty amazing that, that folks really will respond. Uh, it really is an uplifting experience, to be honest with you. Roger's grandparents couldn't be happier with the finished project. A ramp that means they will no longer have to carry their growing 13-year-old grandson outside. They appreciate each and every one of the volunteer workers and donors, but especially this bus driver, who single-handedly organized a project that now gives them help and newfound freedom. It'll make it so much easier so that way when I want to do something with Roger, I don't have to find if my husband's going to be home to help carry him outside or, you know, I can just plop him in his wheelchair and, you know, take him on out down the ramp and then in the car and we can go on an excursion somewhere. From learning how to help our students to actually making it happen, 
It's called the power of we and it occurs every day in Colonial Nation. That's it for this edition of Keeping Up with Colonial. I'm Lauren Wilson, your public information officer for the Colonial School District.